Hello, everybody. You're with Tom and Fern. I'm Tom. I'm Fern. And with us today is Sarah Stutter's own Paige <laughs> Dunlap Halpin. Mm. Welcome to the show, the big show. Thanks, Tom. Yeah. It's good to be yeah. here. Thanks for having me. Probably You're the apex of your career, I bet. Truly. Yeah. I can't think of anything more special. Well, it's all downhill from there. <laughs> yeah, <that's right>. so. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's, let's quickly tell, tell your story. Mm. Uh, uh, so you came down here as a child, about what, mm. what age? We moved down here in 69. My mm -hmm. dad moved us down here, and uh, I have one brother, Scott, and uh, we were six and four at the time, and took up golf at Bobby Jones, and went to Sarasota High School, and went on to, both of us played for the University of Florida, and then we both ended up playing professionally. You were, right, so you're humble. You were, you were a two-time mm. All-American mm. at Florida, yep. right? Mm. Yep. Hall of Fame, Florida Hall of Fame, True. UF Hall of Fame. Yeah. Got to chat with Stevie Spurrier. Yeah. About the short game? Yeah. Is he any good? Uh, actually, he can hit it. He really can mm -hmm. hit it. Yeah. All right. So he's, you know, he's serious about it. He, he No two-footers given. I mean, putter them all out. Yeah. When Keith DeBose uh, was here, he did a great Steve Spurrier imitation. I don't know if you want to do you one. Want, you want to give it a shot? I don't. Okay. Unless you have a visor I can throw. All right. All that right. would be it. How many, how many U.S. Opens? Uh, seven. All right. And quickly tell mm -hmm. us about your first one. Um, my first win on tour. No, your first U.S. Open. My first U.S. Open, well, my first U.S. Open uh, wasn't a win, but my first U.S. Open was when I was 17, mm. and it was up in Mass, in uh, Salem, Mass, and I remember, uh, you know, playing with Pat Bradley mm. in a practice round, how cool that was, and uh, just being that age and being around really great players, how inspiring it was. Now, just going back to college, you were on the two-time, you also were an individual champion one right, year, right? right? And you won the Broderick Award as the collegiate best collegiate women's golfer of the year. Right. That's quite heady, but you said it came naturally to you growing up. Uh, some people have to fight to be a good golfer, but not, well, not you. Well, I say that because my parents tell me between Scott and myself, I was the one with the more natural you know, ability to play the game. Mm -hmm. um, he, he's gone on to do great things in golf, and, and I did too, and I had a nice college career. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had really good teams while I was at, at Florida. We never finished worse than third in the country mm -hmm. all four years where I was there. And I think I still today thought that the program would just continue on that ascent, mm -hmm. but you realize that it doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. You know, you have ebbs and mm -hmm. flows and peaks and valleys, and uh, I think, you know, our women's golf, you know, program up at mm. Florida is actually going to be doing really good mm. things here coming up. But yeah, the, those uh, four years in college were great. Won the national championship in 86. Uh, mm. And uh, hopefully that's not the best thing that ever happened. Well, I, I got to ask at you, 19. I've been to Gainesville. Uh -huh. I know there's a bunch of bars. You ever go out one night and you had a match in the morning and you didn't quite make the tea time or <laughs> anything you can tell us here? And you know, <laughs> not really. I can't remember that, uh, that we're going to divulge on right. television. But I can remember going, you know, we'd have qualifying at 7 a.m. And right. as soon as you could see the sun, Coach Ryan had us flying down the first hole. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'd have to get up early on. I would go to Krispy Kreme, get, you know, donuts and orange juice before. So I was hopped up on sugar, right. you know, shoot about three under on the front nine. And, and, and then, then, then the back nine, you know, forget it, you're dragging back nine. Yeah, exactly. I said college about 7.30, Krispy Kreme, that was when I was getting in. That was when you were getting in, <laughs> washing well, it down yeah. with that stale Budweiser <laughs> on, on, on the counter. Um, but you, you joined the, uh, and obviously it's a testament to how difficult the tour is. Just talk about, you had a great college career, you turned pro, and uh, just talk about how difficulty, how the difficulty in keeping that game in college and transferring it to the pro game. Yeah, it, the LPJ tour is certainly a huge step mm. above, you know, a good college player going out onto the LPJ tour is uh, it's just a, another level mm. and you have to get better. And I did get better. I played the tour for almost uh, eight years, 10 mm -hmm. years total that I was professional and, uh, and, I, and I improved, but the LPJ tour is an international tour. Mm. And as I got better, more international players came mm. over. Um, I played with Sayri Pack, my very last uh, U.S. Open at Pumpkin Ridge. And she was a rookie on tour. She had just arrived in the United States. And I thought, I think she's going to be pretty good. And, and it turns out mm. she ends up being Sayri Pack, mm. who really led the in flux of all the Korean players that we see today mm. on the tour. And uh, so, yes, it's a huge step between a good good amateur player and a good professional mm. player, a really great professional player, there's a big gap there. Mm. So yeah, it's, it's difficult. So who's your favorite golfers as a kid when you were growing up? Um, 
Jack Nicholas. Uh, yeah, mm. and who still today? I mean, just love the guy and just love all he does. But uh, so yeah. you played you played golf with some dude running for president of the United States. Is that true? I did play with Trump, and uh, I played with him in New Jersey. <laughs> How'd you know about that? That's yeah, pretty yeah. funny. Yeah. Um, well, he gets me on the phone about yeah. every morning. You know, yeah, when you talk to him about foreign the policy, yeah. I was I chatted with him yeah. this morning about that. Uh, yeah, we were up in uh, in Atlantic City, and uh, he saw saw me in the program. Said I want to play with her. Did he ever and, uh, allow you to pick up the ball, or did he oh, ever he knock was, his ball from the rough into the green? He was all about you looking? know you know I got you know ten bucks long drive right. every hole. You know it was a wager. Every right. hole was a wager, and uh, he he was pretty cool because he he actually allowed us take his helicopter up to New York City for dinner. Then flies back, and I mean, it, was, well, it was a cool. He was trying to do everything. Cool. <laughs> uh, I, I know you were out at the cool Honda, Honda Cup. That's where I saw I was, you to invite yes. you on the show. Uh, the world team seems to be catching up, but just address golf in general. When I was growing up, I was watching Joe Ancona, Pat Bradley. It seems like those personalities are gone, being replaced by European players who have the same co cookie cutter type game that really doesn't draw the interest of the That's fans like true. I, I think you, you hit the nail right on the head and those are the players that we identify mm. with I think the fact that we had a, a tour event here in Sarasota for so many years mm. uh, got us enthralled with the LPGA tour and those were the players that put the tour on the map mm. and we need the Paula creamers to mm. you know start winning again and more American players because we don't know the the European players or the Asian players and they all have great games mm. But the personalities seem to be missing, mm -hmm. and it's it's something that we can't really gravitate to, or, or really you know sink our our teeth into and mm -hmm. enjoy what they're doing. So I don't know what the answer is, mm -hmm. other than we've got to start developing more young players so they can go mm -hmm. out on the tour and be successful. Because it's certainly more enjoyable to say hey I grew up next to so and so mm -hmm. and she's out there you know winning tour events and how neat that is so um, I think the first tee is doing a good job of trying mm -hmm. to you know get younger girls involved in the game the USGA the LPGA are joining forces together the PGA of America is starting to really put programs in place uh, I see that for girls I don't see it as much for boys but mm -hmm. All in all, mm. I think we as, you know, a country of sports and, you know, golf specifically, if we are going to be serious about developing mm. good, good talent to go on and, and play great, we've got to start at the grassroots, mm. which is our young kids. Yeah. So what do you do now? I teach now. I teach mm -hmm. a little bit, a uh, little public golf course, golf gate. And uh, if I have a friend that asks me to help her or him, mm -hmm. I say, sure. Do, do you still find that golf is as popular as it was men and women when tiger woods was at his heyday it seems like since that he's dropped off the interest the public interest in watching it has dropped off am i wrong on that no or? you're absolutely correct on mm. that and and it's it's unfortunate i mean we mm. we see it right here in our city you, you just don't even have to look any further than mm. right here fox fires closed uh sunrise closed mm. uh, we have we have golf courses that are just shutting their doors and um mm. so as a result of that um no, golf mm -hmm. is not as popular, and I worry about it because, you know, I also have a, a young son, and although he likes it, he enjoys it, and I want him to get out mm -hmm. there and play with us, but he'd certainly much rather be in playing video games with his friends, whether it's online or in person. Well, so with Tom and, here and on yeah, the set. Yeah. I mean, it's... <laughs> but, you know, I say get those kids out on the golf course and get them playing mm. because if, if they're not enjoying the game, then someday when they're 40, 50, or 20, 30, 40, uh, they're not going to be playing the game. Mm. So we've got these great golf courses that are, are not going to be able to mm. sustain themselves. And uh, I also think that uh, we need to really promote public golf at an affordable level so mm. we can get people out to play and not make it so... Uh, privatized and exclusive to just those that that the haves that are that are playing. You know, we need to you know keep it so everybody can play and right. enjoy the game. I'm, yeah. I'm a have not. I don't know about you. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe make make the holes out of mason jars so they're easier. Speak. What a segue! You ought to be writing for us. That's the best transition I've heard or read here in quite a while. 
Uh, you want tea though? Well, no, yeah, we uh, uh, we asked. I don't even know what terms. I told you my story about how I <laughs> I was going to take golf lessons, golf in in college, and the, the, our football coach taught the golf class, and I showed up at eight o'clock in the morning, and there were eighteen bags and nineteen students, and he said, uh, "Wouldn't you rather?" sleep in and get an A. A. And yeah, so I didn't take off and that was the rest is history. That's why I don't do it now. Now we couldn't afford a hole here because we can't <laughs> drill through the floor because we have somebody on the second uh -huh. floor, but we want to test Paige's putting prowess, okay. All which right. is a lot of alliteration before noon. So we got two mason jars. You can choose one okay. approximate the size of his yap, a little bit bigger. Then you got one that approximates yeah. mine. Yeah, your brain. And, right. <laughs> Once and, again, I say the larger the better. And we the, will take the, the lid off for you. Okay. We'll, we'll make it easy. So Great. we're going to set it up over uh, here. All right. And <laughs> in two. I was at. I bet your stand is right. That's nice. Thanks for joining. All right, so we're closing out. We'll be off next week uh, for Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. We'll be back the following week with Jennifer Borson. Happy tea day. <laughs>